Welcome to Make Card Maniacs. I'm Jay. And I'm John. And today we're talking about all of the crazy WWE releases that happened that blew my mind. Sorry, I was getting emotional there. <laughs> we're talking about where we want to see them show up. Yeah. So all of these releases came as a massive shock. I don't think anybody saw this coming. Uh, so we want to talk about each and every one of them and where we can see them showing up. We'll start with Lana. That's the one that everyone wants to know about. Yeah, because we know exactly what's going to happen. She's either going to re retire from wrestling in general to focus on acting if they ever make more Pitch Perfects. I think that was her bread and butter. But you know she's going to end up at AEW. She's married to Miro in real life. She's a great valet for Miro. She did it for so long, even trying to do this Russian accent for ages. She's willing to put in the work to do what she needs to do. And being able to be herself, kind of like Miro is allowed to, I think that's the perfect fit. Even if she doesn't wrestle, if she's just a valet or a manager, that's great. But we can also see that feud between Miro and Lana and his ex-best friend, Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. But who's gonna be the face? That's the real issue. I think Kip Sabian would be the face. I mean, Penelope Ford, people love her. Oh wait, <laughs> yeah, JR loves her. I mean, we like her too, but we like her for her wrestling. JR's a little creepier with his love. Next up, we'll talk about Santana Garrett. This is probably somebody that's unknown to a lot of people, but as we started this channel and AEW started popping off, I really got hooked on women's wrestling and looking through like Shimmer and looking at the indies and looking at all of the best women talent that I wanted to see in AEW, as I've made tons of AEW women videos in the past, Santana Garrett was one of those people that I wanted in AEW. She is fantastic. I would say that she's pretty close to Serena Deeb level as far as just her ability is concerned, and I want her in AEW. I think that's the perfect fit for her too. It's only gonna strengthen the division. If anything, I could see her going to NWA, but I think the big thing with everyone we're gonna talk about today is how unexpected it is, because almost all of them were like either set for a big push or on TV regularly. Like that's the strangest thing. Cause I know Garrett was like Royal Rumble and then ready to be pushed and release. Uh, something similar that happened like a little while back was Brandy Lauren getting released, which we never did a video on that big release, but I was a big fan of her and she's Joey Janela's girlfriend. I think they're still seeing each other, but like regardless, she's a fantastic wrestler. She's been in tons of promotions and I wish she would also go to AEW, which would be funny to revisit the uh, Penelope Ford, Kip Sabian, Joey Janela, Brandy Lauren situation. It's like, hey, that's my ex-girlfriend. Here's my new girlfriend. That would be great stuff. Anyway, wrestling's not all about relationships, but hey, that, it's one of the things that you that comes into play when you're thinking about this kind of stuff. Next up is one of your favorites, I think. Yeah, my but, boy, Buddy Murphy. He is just an unreal talent. I've seen lots of live shows with him, in particular, when I saw an NXT show, probably to this day, one of the best wrestling matches I've ever seen. It was Murphy versus Ricochet. They destroyed the house, and Murphy can literally go with anyone and he's got to go to AEW. The potential for the feuds that he could have with any wrestler is just fantastic. His style of wrestling complements anyone. He was so underappreciated in WWE that he would be the next Pac. And Buddy Murphy, similar frame, similar style. He could definitely destroy it. I've never been a huge Murphy fan, to be honest. And I think that there's too many people in AEW, as far as like the men's talent, the women's talent, I'm like, yes, all women go here. Murphy, I would pr probably prefer to see the like New Japan. I'd like to see him go against like Blake Christian. Blake Christian is a talent like from the Indies that I immediately loved. And while he's a little bit faster than Murphy is, I think that they could put on one hell of a match. And so at minimum, I wanna see that happen. Yeah, I think I'd rather him kind of float around for a little bit, like do one-off matches before signing anywhere. And I think there's too many people around that same level that AEW has recently introduced or are trying to get into the title picture. I think he'd get lost. I can see where you're coming from. This is just me <laughs> fantasy booking. Of course. But another place I would love to see him go would be potentially Impact, just because what he would bring to the match quality. It's funny, when we think about this, we think about storylines. I'm literally just thinking of the matches, like how many potential five-star matches could happen. Like you could go back and I would love to see Murphy versus Swan. 
Cause like that's a cruiserweight classic in itself right there. Oh, Impact would be good too. There's a lot of great matches there. Even like TJP and Murphy would put on a banger. Yeah. And like even Petey Williams. Petey Williams, I was just thinking about that would be excellent. If Murphy ends up in Impact, he would immediately shoot up as a star in my opinion. It, it happened with Swan, so it's it, it could easily happen with Murphy. Yeah, so he's kind of up in the air, I think, from both of us. We're okay with wherever he goes. We just want to make sure he's on TV and not like going to the indies forever. Someone else like that that I want to make sure doesn't go to the indies, but I'm okay with it as well. Ruby Riot. Riot Squad will get rid of Sarah Logan and we'll still run with it. You can't have a Riot Squad without Ruby Riot. Heidi Lovelace, she's fucking awesome. She was brutally underused. I mean, the Riot Squad did a good job, but they opted to go like push Liv Morgan, and that's great. I love Liv, but Ruby's a great wrestler. She's been everywhere, and much like Santana Garrett, she was over in Shim she was a Shimmer champion for a little bit. She's gonna kill it wherever she goes. I think that AEW would be the best place for her. Like I said, all women I'm basically saying go to AEW. I think she would bring a lot to that, but I would also like to see her go to Impact. I think they need some fresh faces, to be honest, because it seems like we see a lot of the same matches over and over again. I mean, bringing Taylor Wilde into the fold is fun, but with Jazz Departure, like we see a lot of the same matches happening. And so bringing Ruby Riot in would be excellent. And I completely agree. If she went to AEW, it just makes your women's division stronger. I think if she goes to Impact, it's just gonna bring a whole fresh face and a whole new like round of matches. Impact's probably the better choice for her just because she can always come to AEW after she's reestablished herself. There is that stigma. I think that's the problem with some of these wrestlers is they weren't used and some people forgot how good they are. So instead of her just going to AEW and doing a bunch of dark matches, have her like go right into Impact, wrestle all the women and just show how dominant she can be. Yeah, and then bring her into like main event, not don't put her on elevation, don't put her on dark you put her directly on dynamite. AEW women's division is tough because with the limited amount of match times, hopefully when this Rampage show kicks off in like August, I hope we get more women's matches. So talking about Aleister Black, my first instinct is definitely go to New Japan. He's so good, he's so fast and so clean. I wanna see him do some work. There's lots of places that he can go and has been when he was Tommy End. This is booking storyline wise. Of course, we may even just do a whole video on this, AEW, being his current gimmick from WWE, he could easily be the new leader of the Dark Order. That would be a very interesting storyline and a nice fit for him. But I would love to see him and Zelina Vega go to Ring of Honor. He would be that top star presence, especially as things are opening up, we're getting more live shows. That's the kind of person that you wanna have be your top guy at the company. Yeah, especially like with them losing somebody that has a very similar mystique about them in Marty Skrull. <laughs> He's got that dark side that I think Ring of Honor doesn't really have. I mean, they do have that one horror guy, Vincent, the Horror King. So like Aleister Black even like joining forces with him would be cool. I wonder if Thea Trinidad would actually like kind of do almost like a Karrion Cross situation like Scarlet does. I'm all for that dark shit. So wherever he can do his thing and we're recording this on the day that they were released, I actually watched him show up on her stream and he talked for like an hour about some of the plans that he had some of the, like he has some of the original music that he owns the copyrights for and stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff that I think would really pop over there. And then have fucking Danhausen come out like, who's this guy? I thought I'm very evil. Who's this? He's very, very evil. Oh my God, give me that. And then probably the biggest shock was Braun Strowman. Vince McMahon loves big beefy dudes. He pushes them to the moon, including Braun. They basically built him from nothing. Well, I mean, he was already a big stack of meat for a long ass time, but he transitioned into this big guy, into this big monster. They pushed him as such. He was main eventing WrestleMania. He goes from being just a gladiator rosebud to main eventing WrestleMania. He is exactly what WWE sees as a main event star. I guess from what they're saying, it's just the contract was too much money for what he does, which I can completely understand. He's not injury prone, but he said like his knees aren't what they used to be. He's very top heavy and people built like that can't do 
20 to 30 minute matches, can't run around. Like his specialty is smashing giant instruments and flipping trucks. He's not gonna go out and put a 30 minute match somewhere against like Kenny Omega. He's not gonna find a contract anywhere. He can't go to Impact. They don't need him. He's gonna be too expensive. Impact has Fulton, which they underutilize as like their big man. And with Morrissey being there, like they don't need another big guy that can't move. They've got big guys that can move. ROH isn't gonna have the money for him. Uh, especially like hearing that he was asked, he had like a million dollar a year contract. AEW doesn't want him, that's for sure. It would be interesting to see him go to New Japan because he could be like the next Albert. You have guys like Albert, Vader, like Japan eats up these big guys that he could in theory work a match schedule that he just has five minute squash matches and could either be the biggest face because he's so powerful or the biggest heel because everyone hates that he's just killing these little guys. Yeah, and I think that they would like love him over there. I just don't know if he would be interested. He might even be done with wrestling and he was cussing off the indies, so there's no way he's getting booked at Warrior Wrestling or anything because he was talking shit. He was talking shit to Evil Uno. He was talking shit to a lot of people. Very outspoken dude who just probably isn't worth the hassle, to be honest. I just don't think he's gonna do anything. I think he's done with wrestling. I think that's not a bad thing, if I'm gonna be honest. There was one moment where everyone loved Braun and it was so short-lived that that's not enough to carry him into any other promotion. It's really tough. All of these releases, we obviously, we didn't want them to get released. Whether we like them in their roles in WWE, you never want to see people get fired from their jobs. So it's unfortunate that they've, that they've all currently lost their livelihood and all that, but hopefully, they've got something else sorted or they're able to get back into what they love. Where do you think everyone's gonna show up? Do you think they're going to quit? Do you think they're gonna go to the indies? Where are they showing up? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Like this video. And if it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date with everything Mid Card Mania. Yeah.